Knights, and we're going to be taking a look at Sons of Caprison versus these guys from DV Silver Gold Team. Uh, Deja Vu, yeah, that's it. And let's just talk about what I said before the game, and then we'll see how it's implemented and see if we come across anything else interesting. Um, so first off, I said, well, we're going to plan around top mid um, instead of bot lane. So this kind of bot lane is a little bit debatable. The Ash is essentially, I don't think it's ideal in this kind of comp where we're not looking to play around Ash early on. I think it's a little bit risky. I think, let's say, something ultra safe or something at least with some mobility like uh, Tristana would maybe be a little bit more lenient. But Ash with Disengage still works. Still works into our comp, right? Um... And they can make plays individually as well with that. So they might not rely on the jungler as much as when they pick something else. So we're going to actually play around top lane. Um, there's two scenarios. So the first one is that Pickles shoves in the Ur uh, Orn, which I expect to happen. Um, in that scenario, I got to stop, got to stop saying um. In that scenario, we're going to gank by doing Red, Krugs, Raptors, and then straight to top lane. We're going to ignore the jungle. We're going to ignore the scuttle which hasn't spawned by then. And we're going to maybe just place a ward over here if we don't have any information or if we want that. But we're going to go to top lane. If, uh, if Junjo pushes in the Renekton, then instead, Sishwani can go base. Unless there's something super immediate on a map. The plan was go base, follow the instruction. And in that case, she might be able to do rules into blue or just blue. And then go top lane on the bounce. Just, just, just gonna time it on the bounce, right? That's the the main consideration in that case. When can I gank so that it's on the slow push after Renekton finished his slow push, which is what a bounce is. All right. So, and we talked about our plan. Our plan is gonna be to focus on top lane immediately, and at level six. We're going to evaluate whether it's easiest to gank top directly or whether it's easier to actually gank mid lane and bring mid lane over the top. If Renekton goes 0-3, then we're going to probably look for mid and bot and obviously just evaluate the game state from there. Ideally, we want to focus mid. Like, obviously with an Ari, we generally want to focus mid. If, if any of these lanes drop a summoner, that really puts them open for heavy camping afterwards. So we just want to adapt our ganking focus based on that and that's something i mentioned that's something i'll be focusing on as well that's a relatively good clear you can you can already kind of wait here let those uh krug walk alongside with you as you already walk to the raptor camp this guy's inting if he were to attack you here you would not die anyway let's just keep focusing on the game that's obviously just a micro there so here, Orn is pushing in Renekton. And we kind of talked about how we would do a gank straight away in that case. And this guy, I don't, I think we scouted him. I, I think we scouted him going into the bot side, right? So this is some advanced routing right here. And this is why you need this ward. This ward needs to be in river. And ideally it would be in their jungle, but that's going to be risky against a Blitzcrank, so that isn't always possible. But it needs to be in River. And in that case, you're going to see soon where the Olaf is and what his position is like. So we can bypass the Olaf here, right? Because Orn is pushing, we're going to have a 2v2 on our hands, so I'm very interested to see how that's going to happen. Alright, so we see McGough go straight past it. This is beautiful! This is beautiful. This We would have gotten clobbered by the Olaf under any other circumstance than doing the route the way the pros do it. Literally perfection. It's beautiful. Wow. They are being out. Oh my goodness. My dear lord, this is beautiful. Ah, Pickles. You can just walk in there and eat it. all the minions. Kill all the minions. The cooldowns are glitched, so I can't really use those. Oh, beautiful, man, oh man, this is why this route that Olaf is doing is not sound. We're using the sound route, he's not. 
I love that you guys are doing this just right. And if you guys made any mistake, this was, this was close. Like, if you made any mistakes here in execution, it would have not worked. This is a collaboration between coach and team. All right. Okay. First point. First big point. Um, the reason that this route works is because even if you want to end up topside, you're just going to ignore your bot lane camps and, and just do your bot side. The reason for that is it has been highlighted by skill cap recently. That's because the Krugs and Raptors are overvalued in terms of experience. They have too much. So you want to take those. Okay, that's nice. It's desynchronized. Okay. Um, so I can't use the tablet. Anyway, so you want to make sure... Let's throw my tablet out of the window real quick. There we go. Won't be bothering us anymore. So you want to make sure that you take those and spawn. And you put those on respawn. You take those all the time. Uh, and if you if you can take, the, for example, if this guy is on the scuttle, then you can just take the upside sky scuttle. You want it to be top mid anyway, right? So this is completely fine. If if Olaf were like about to reach top side and you wanted to be there fast and just grab the scuttle first and then go into Raptors, that would make some sense, especially if o o if uh, Renekton is being pushed or something, or it's just gonna finish the shelf and base. But that's not, those are all like extra conditions on the basic rule, right? First you establish the basic rule is just go do Krux, Raptors, and Spawn. And then there's always special conditions that can make you deviate. So this is another great situation to gank top lane ASAP. And this is one of the major tension points. I haven't been writing down tension points. Go, 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 go. Look at the lane state. Look at the lane state. Who's pushing into who? It's gonna be... Um, Orn is pushing into Renekton, right? Especially if Renekton doesn't touch the wave, which he doesn't have to. Especially if, you, if you're coordinating this. You can coordinate and say, don't queue the wave. He's gonna push into us. Look at this. It's pushing, it's pushing, it's pushing. You don't need to look for the Olaf. I like what you're doing. I really like your style. I really like that your incent incentive is to... Scout out the enemy jungle, put deep forces in, take the initiative. But you are an extension of your laners before you are essentially an opponent of your jungler. Um, so if you're playing Camille, this playstyle is correct. I would prioritize trying to scout out the Olaf before ganking top lane. If you're playing Sejuani, just gank and get takedowns. Uh, and zone people off minion waves if you if you can. Oh, micro. Haha. <laughs> Alright, it's a little bit of anticipation. If you know he has a Z-Hub, you know he's gonna have to use it. So you just stand behind him and wait with your jump. Or line up. Like, I'm I'm not a Sejuani player, but if I understand the mechanic uh, correctly, you can just stand between them and the turret and then just make sure you hit him when they line up their body to the turret. When you notice that, you can you know you can just bump into them as soon as you can. That's a little bit of micro, just a little bit of uh, planning around their ability usages and stuff. Just something I want to mention. And Pickles Man picks up the kill. Gets it? Pickles picks up the kill. Pickles picked up a pack of pickled peppers. Now say that three times fast. Pickles picked up a pack of pickled peppers. Pickles picked up a pack of pickled peppers. And Pickle picks up a pack of pickled peppers. Alright, let's keep going with the actual review. I'm very sorry that I put you through that. I apologize. All right, what's up in bot side? Okay, so in that kind of in this kind of scenario, what's the game state like? Renekton, can you do something here? Yeah, you can. Um, is this top side up? If you doubt, I mean, if this pink ward is over here, you can tell if it goes to Krux. This is a little bit of an improvement on that pink ward. Just put it over here. Again, these are all just minor points, not like big themes, but just, just, just tiny little execution things. I would... Honestly, you're brilliant. Um, if you went from the other side, we would have probably also gotten it, but you needed to walk a longer time. Maybe you are communicating here with the Ari. Maybe Destiny, maybe you're like, Hey, uh, Sejuani, hey. McGough, can you just come in here as soon as possible? I, this guy's playing up all the time. I don't know. He's randomly playing up in the lane. I don't know why. 
But yeah, this works out great. Maybe you guys saw a pattern. All right, I forgot about the 10 minute bandicam restriction. Anyway, nothing important happened when I got cut off. Just some trolling. Uh, anyway, so let's see what happens. So, McGough is showing some adaptiveness beyond what I prescribed. But if you look at the game state, it is sound. It's a sound decision making. So far, a very excellent performance by McGough. You want to gank here, though. Like, you don't want to hesitate. You either pull the trigger or you don't go bot side. So if, if you are over here and you're like, we can pull the trigger and go for it, go for it. If if you feel like this is too uncanny because Caitlyn still has flash, so she, you're just going to get a flash and get out on a side that you don't want to really focus on, then just go like, get this, get this. Right now, this is, this is the game plan, right? You got a winning game. The question is, how do you want to win? Because obviously, it's, it's hard to argue when you're doing well. But here are his raptors. Oh, right, this thing is still off. Okay, so, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here are his raptors. And his krugs are up as well, right? Okay, it's, it's reversed now. Interesting. It's, okay, well, tablet, still a piece of crap. Anyway, so you got his raptors and his krugs. And you get the herald. This is what you want. This is, this is what you want to get out of the top side. You want to pressure this dude. When he, when you, when Renekton finishes the push anywhere while you're in here for like two minutes, you can gank on the bounce again. So, you really you want to kind of ignore this part if you can, and maybe get a four man Ari up the top lane. That's our game plan, right? I'm not saying you can't play this way. I could have told you, you know what? We're gonna play around these players. It's mostly a decision based around. Um, what I want to test out with the team right now. This is a scrim, and it's not about, okay, this is the only way you can play, otherwise you lose. Um, so it's not a performance-based thing. It's not like if this were solo queue, I would have said you can only gank the Renekton early on, but it's, I want to see you guys execute a cer certain play style and, and really hone down on it. Then we can focus drafts on it more or less based on whether it goes well or not. If we don't very clearly follow the concept, I can't judge. Um, can we do clean, like, Herald-based game plans or not? Because we didn't do it. Even though we might have won, right? So we, we accomplished one thing in the scrim, but we didn't accomplish the goal that I set out in the scrim. That's just a little point. It's, like, very, very unnatural, perhaps, to not just try and win the game. Um, obviously, if I felt like the top lane plan was just losing, then, you know, that would make me a very bad coach, but it's not a losing plan. In this case, you could still take the Crux away from the Olaf, especially with the Smite, and then go for the, the Herald. Greediness in that case is a good thing. This is a little bit conservative. I would like to see the Herald 10 minutes before 40 minutes. That's our main, main early game. I don't want to say win condition, our main early game goal. The goal was get the Herald. The win condition is to get the turret, right? If we get the turret, we've almost we're almost in a winning position. How do we get there? The Herald, right? So our early game plan consisted of focusing mid and top. We went bot lane a few times when we could just sit sit in the top side and get Krugs and Raptors, and we could also just get the Herald, right? So again. This is very focused around the jungler because that is kind of how the play is distributed in the early game. Um, anything I say about bot lane is going to be focused around trading and CSing, auto spacing, uh, how the matchup works. It's going to be very individualistic, right? So naturally, my early game focus is going to be on this. Like in late game, I'm going to focus on bot lane. All right. This would be another situation in which you are healthy enough to go into the enemy jungle. Right now you ha don't have anything to do here. Okay, oh, that's an interesting one. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a situation I didn't talk about. What if Renekton doesn't get the turret and we lose the plates? Then get it mid or top was the prescription, so to say. But nobody is down on their team. And Renekton isn't here. But Renekton has TP and... Okay, this is a really complex situation. So you're gonna have three people. 
And Ash and Zillion are going to have to contest these guys and walk mid. So this wave is still, right? This is what I call a still wave. You have very you have to understand something about tempo in this case. So Usually, why do you go to minion waves? Because you need levels and stuff. Well, you guys got levels. You got level 6 at least. So levels, the value has gone down for a while. Right now, um, there's this huge... Oh, right. I can't use the tablet. Forgot about that. Piece of crap. Throw it out the window. Right now, there's this huge spike of tempo in mid lane. And what I means, or what I should be saying is that the importance of time... And the importance of any resource in mid lane has just drastically increased because the presence of the Herald. So anyone who makes his way there is going to drastically add value to the team, right? Um, and if you have to give up CS for that, that's not really relevant. So right now, because this wave is in the center, you're not going to lose that much. This is a cannon wave, which, as you know, takes very long to die. So you have plenty of time to just go mid lane... And you're just going to lose one or two waves of minions eventually if, if bot lane chooses to stay. You're not going to lose any plates anymore, so you're going to get first turret off of that plate. If bot lane commits to this plate, what's going to happen in mid lane? You have a herald there! So what happens is you get the mid tier 2. That's the end of the game right there. That's just absolute macro blunder if bot lane commits to uh, the bot tier 1. They need to respond to the mid lane because there's a herald. That's the point. So this is really, really, really sloppy from both teams. Because both teams don't commit to the Herald play. Um, when we do this in the future, we are going to send bot lane mid lane. Unless there's like three waves under the turret and they're going to get first turret. But this would be first turret with bot lane there. And we're going to do it on when bot lane has their engages up. And we're going to use Renekton TP. It's going to look coordinated. That would be my goal. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be crystal, crisp execution. But I want as many people there as possible. As many resources and alts and TPs used as possible. And make an effort to get the mid-tier one. And if then, if then the enemy team makes a slight mistake, you get mid-tier two. And that's when you look like a bunch of boosters. And you're on maybe even a mid-tier three. That's That might actually happen. When I... Let's say when we're going to play diamonds versus silvers, this is where the biggest discrepancies lie. Yeah, like You maybe get some advantages in lane, but we got that in this game as well. But here's when you can convert that to just essentially completely end the game and potentially get the tier 3 here. Like, if, if they really don't respond with bot lane in time, it's going to just be devastating. They should they should know Herald is... is how, that's just how the game works. Alright, so a little bit of a rant... Point is, Herald is the main point of the entire video game, early game, uh, in, in this game plan. Just like Drake is in other game plans. And everything needs to be revolved around that. That's constantly what you think about. How do I get that? How do I get that? That's number one priority. I'd rather see too many resources used. So let's say you accidentally send two people too many, and then we'll talk about the constraints. Hmm. How many people do we? Like, what's the limitations on this? How can we send less people here, right? Limit our waste of resources. Right? But we'll figure that out once we make the play happen with 100% commitment. Alright, so Shwani clearing and helping bot lane. Again, this is kind of a natural tendency. We do still don't have anything going on in top lane. So, at this point, the game is won, and Ash is ahead, and Pickles is ahead, we, we won through a lot of individual play, and the early game went very well. And bot lane just outclassed the enemy bot lane, and also had a technically favorable matchup, but I'm not going to put it on that. You guys just out, like, outperformed them fair and square, um, without much help of the jungler very early on, and then later on, I mean, you guys were stomping them, so it's easy for McGough to come in. So, no... Not gonna take away from that. Alright, so I made all the points. I'll compile them in the chat. Um, but that's it for this one. I saw what I want to see. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Boom.